If you guys remember a couple of weeks ago, we had a man named Matthew Roberts on my channel and he was telling us why he thinks that Charles Manson is his father. Well, he's invited us to come and check out his correspondence letters from jail with Charles. So we decided to do it today and he said, hey, why don't you come down to my recording space downtown and I wanna play a song. And I said, sure, let's do that. When he told me the address, I started laughing and I said, that's where my recording studio was when my band started. We were in this same building for five years. So this is gonna be a great day because he's gonna show us those letters. Um, he's gonna play a Manson song in his own style. And he's also gonna tell you about, um, he's decided to start a YouTube channel because so many people have requested it. I'm gonna help him get it started. But we also have a special guest in from out of town today. You guys probably recognize Breck. Hey everyone. Go ahead and watch Breck's channel, Escaping the Mouse, because he's gonna be making a video with Matthew Roberts today as well. So, Days with Jordan the Lion, Escaping the Mouse, and Matthew Roberts begins now. Well, hello, Matthew Roberts. Thank you for the fantastic introduction. You're a pretty popular guy right now on my channel. A lot of people love you or hate you. And um, today, you know, one of the biggest things that everybody was asking about was something that you and I intended on doing in the first video, which was showing the letters of your correspondence. And our interview went so long, it was my decision. I think we should do it in a separate vlog. So that's what we're doing today. But you had such a big, um, I guess, burst of enthusiasm from people that like you so much that you've decided to kind of do your own channel, your own tarot channel. Do you want to name or tell people how they can find you on there? And then we'll we'll go into everything sure. else. Well, you had asked me about the documentary I was doing before and I, and I ended up um, at, you know, the behest of some people that watched it, uh, scrapping the whole thing. And I was, I had watched VH1 behind the music and decided I was going to do it in that format because it seemed like a much better way to do it. But now I'm like, oh God, I got to start all over, you know, editing. I taught myself to edit and, you know, I'm not, I'm okay, but I'm not great at it. So I just thought, well, this is so much better. I'll just put this stuff out, you know, or do something on, on a YouTube channel and, and, um, and you can, converse with people that have questions right, that way right it would be so much you know and i don't have to worry about distribution or getting a deal or whatever so um i've I already had a, a youtube channel it's one man's son um but it's and, and i'll put the link right below you it's matthew roberts one man's right, son right and and i've got you know my videos and music and and different things i've, I've got a couple of songs a rock band video game uh, did music in a movie soundtrack with Rob Snyder, American Crude, and a bunch of concert footage and stuff. But what I'm going to start doing, um, because of the response that I got, was, and also because I think, that, I think that there's a few things I do with the tarot reading that is different, like like the fact that I don't do the negative interpretations and the, I don't uh, channel spirits or whatever. There's a lot of people like myself who are, are either superstitious or you know, have a Christian upbringing or don't believe in, you know, some of those things that would still like to maybe check out tarot cards. Or, if nothing else, it's entertainment. Yeah, so, well that's, of course it's first and foremost entertainment. And I, I like what you told me, you said it's not, it's not the determination of your life, it's if you see something or say, I say something maybe you don't like, right. you can consciously change it for yourself without... That's right, I mean it, it's, um, you know, I don't want anyone to believe anything I say or, or, or not, just to consider it. And, and then, if, like, like you just said, if, you see, if something feels right to you or you, you, you know, something resonates with you, it's, some, it's a tool to help you confirm what you already know, because everybody is intuitive. Everybody's, you know, in the back of their, you know, heart's heart can know if something feels right or doesn't feel right, or if you want to call it the pineal gland or whatever, third eye, uh, you know, everybody's got that. So. I'm just trying to help people develop it like I feel like I've developed mine and, and um, you know, take it for what it is or, you know, and like, like you just said, you know, there's certain things that you can, there's probabilities of certain future realities or certain things happening and, and, you know, the idea is to find something that doesn't jive with your, your will or, or is not a desirable outcome and change it. If you can't change it, what's the point of knowing it? Right. And that's all we're trying to do. And, and if, if nothing else, it's just, um, 
you know, it's fun and, and it brings people together and, and, you know, you can kind of talk about issues that you maybe can't talk about with other people. I don't know. And like you said, you, you feel like you're helping people. I you're do. giving people a little bit of something. If nothing, it's, it's, it's a little hope or a little mm -hmm. something. People stuck in a rut, maybe it's a chance to take what you're saying and, and kind of go in a direction that they feel maybe they were afraid to go in before or something. Right. Who knows? I mean, if nothing, I mean, it's just talking is more therapeutic than people even know. You know? Right. And you told me you've been hit up by a lot of emails. So this is, oh, right. you know, yeah. the, so this will be a chance for you to put out some videos and, and as well, people can correspond oh, with you great. and you said you'll yeah. still do that through they email. Can. Yeah. They can e email me and, and, um, you know, get a reading right over the phone or we can do it in person, but it's not necessary. I've, I've done, you know, what, five or six so far and, and they've been r ridiculously uh, accurate. I mean, it seems like um, there's something to, I guess, people's energy and, and being um, excited about it, I guess. It's, you know, I mean, it was, it was really a, it was a unique experience for me as well. Well, excellent, man. I'm, and I told you I'm willing to help you get your channel going as much as I can. Thank you. People were saying that. You should have Jordan help you, you know, and I'm like, I certainly should. He, he does a great job. Oh, dude, I, yeah, I'll be happy you're, to. Like I told you a minute ago, you, I think you're the best interview I've done. You're, you were great. You asked the questions that people want to hear, I think, and, and ultimately you have no agenda, which is the, you know. <laughs> well, you know, dude, I, I thank you because you're, you today, You've invited us to check out something I, I honestly never thought I would see or have in my hands, which are correspondence letters written by Charles Manson to you. I'm excited to see that. What did you bring us today? Well, I brought you everything I got. He used to rant quite a bit, and, and, and then there were times where he was very, very, um, you know, uh, together, with, you know, but there were times where I don't know what happened to him. He'd be in solitary for long periods of time. This is, you're telling me that this is a postcard that he sent you telling you to remove the block on your phone. That's right. And you said you didn't know... I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't understand. And for the longest, I, I, I just did not know what he meant. Because, okay, this is when I asked him for DNA. And he says, you should get the block off of your phone. And then there's this 1-800-444-33330. There's like even too many digits. So I'm like, I don't know what he's... You know, this doesn't make any sense. Um, and, um, and get the block off and I'll call you. Um, thanks for all the faith and support. I'll call you and um, we'll see what, um, what, what does it say, what we can do or what, um, oh, yeah, I'll, like so I can see what you want and, um, and what I think we can do. And uh, he was referring to the DNA because I was asking him, could I have DNA? And, um, he didn't even really even understand and I didn't understand the phone thing so we were both kind of you know <laughs> in the dark on that and uh, that's one thing I kind of regret to this day that I didn't kind of get more proactive and then ultimately he didn't want me visiting him in jail anyway um, because um, you know there were people that were intercepting my mail to him and they were he said bad people that were threatening to do me harm so this is Salvador Dali. Now the interesting thing about this also is that I lived when I that house I described to you with the 107 steps I lived in. Right. Um, I lived with a gentleman named Cristiano Ramisa, who was a pretty famous Italian artist, who was a Salvador Dali protege. He showed me pictures with him and Salvador Dali. Uh, and that's I, what was on the front of the postcard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. I guess maybe Charlie's a big fan or maybe just something laying around. Or, you know, probably because um, he also got mad at me when I didn't send him paper and stamps. I didn't know that, you know, that's such a big commodity in jail, you know. And, um, and, and so this probably was like him going, okay, I'm giving you my best linen or whatever, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could be. There's a childhood photo of you. Now a lot of people would be interested in seeing what you look like as a kid. Brady Bunch hair, hairdo. <laughs> All right, so this is the letter when I wrote to him first and I asked him, did he remember my mother in Cook County, uh, which is where I was born, Cook County Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. And, um, and this, is, this is what he responded with. Um, I won't read the whole thing, but, but you know, he says, he says, your mom's father ran me off saying you bad bandit outlaw bike trash which is exactly what my mother told me, you know, so that really kind of hit me because I'm like, okay, he at least had to have been there in order to know this. Stay out, um, stay out of her life. Um, now, it's not all that 
not that it's all that bad. I um, didn't care. I didn't care. It was um, free love, and you paid the price. I did. I thank my father for he left me uh, open for all men to be my father. Uh, lots of men learn from one. Um, uh, I learned from lots of men. Most men only learn from one. It has its goods and its bads. Yes, I've been in Cook County, and I didn't want to shatter your brain patterns. And then he writes up here, Believe me and see into the Manson vortex. You would and will do best to check out this song I wrote for you. And here's the song, um, Soul. It's up in the corner here, Soul. Um, wait a minute here. I get these. I get these mixed up in what order they were. They came in, but here, okay. Here's the song. The the song, um, Soul. I guess this was the next one that came after it. Um, so he says, I burnt the school down at the age of nine. Um, and never went back. I can't even spell none. So he writes none a bunch of different ways. And that's part of the lyric in the song. He says, believe me, soul, as true as words can. I seen you coming because I was once you coming. Angel man, child of God, child of Satan, I wrote you this song. And it's I'll never say never to always. I'll never say always to none. That's the word he couldn't spell. Um, to seem is to, to dream, my love, because one is one is one. Um, for always is always is forever because one is one is one look inside yourself for your father all is one all is one all is one time to call time up from behind you that illusion has been just a dream hey now and now's where I'll find you somewhere on a sunshine beam hey hey now is forever um, I'll find you on a sunshine beam something like that in the background, girls would, would chant, eternity, eternity now, forever, eternity, eternity, eternity now, forever. And um, that's, that's a song that, um, you know, is one of the ones they play quite a bit when they, you know, talk about the, the girls or whatever. And it, the recording of it is, is, it touched me because you could hear the girls in the background just laughing. They're having such a good time. And they were so happy, you know. And um, Have you ever considered trying <laughs> to put that to music? You know, I, I've never tried to, like, profit or benefit or anything, and it's very important to me that I don't. And um, and for that reason, I've stayed away from any of that. Um, however, I've, since, now that he's passed, and it, it's more of a tribute to him, I think, um, I, you know, Bruce and I are going to play a song um, that is kind of a loose interpretation of uh, Look at Your Game Girl, and we took quite a bit of artistic liberty. Cool, I love that song. I love GNR's version. I like right. Charlie's version. So I feel you like ours, but um, it's quite a bit different. But but um, so that's this. W this will be the first time that I've utilized any of his songs. This particular piece is, is the poetry is really nice in it. I think it's well written or whatever. The song itself, stylistically, it would be pretty difficult to incorporate. I think into what we're doing, you know, because some of his stuff can be quite quirky and, and odd. And and this particular one is it's nice, but it's. Um, stylistically wouldn't be something that I would probably be able to pull off too well so um, that's, that's all you know and I appreciate the fact that I mean he, he in several letters he wrote he wrote about that song and and he wrote it before I was born and said he wrote it to me and um, it's just it's very kind of meaningful and special to me uh, for that reason alone. Is he talking about himself here? In 1933, and yeah. she had a child at, yeah, he says, in prison? Yeah, he says, um, he said, my mom was a runaway at age 13 years old in 1933, and she had um, a child at 16 and went to prison with my father, or with my brother, with her brother and my uncle, her brother, my uncle, and did five years in the 30s in the... MSA. I did. I did five years in the thirties in the MSA children something or other. See, I have trouble reading it. Didn't get out. I think he said it. Did not get loose. He wrote get G I T. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, he's got. Did not get loose and um, did not have babies. Maybe one hundred in the thirties. See now he starts. 
Now it starts getting a little weird. Like, yeah, three million but, in, in yeah, the sixties. But here again, he goes, "I seen you coming, sunshine." He would always call me sunshine. He's like, "Peace, love is wonderful." Um, a lot of people think it's weakness. Learn how to fight, and don't use love as a fear-based, uh, uh, as fear, as a coward to be a uh, fear-based something to be a coward. You must stand strong within yourself. Um, and something, something, something. He, you know, he was giving me advice on not to be a punk. That it would always be some girl would be like, oh, I like your hair, and then the boyfriend would want to fire him. And he said he spent more time fighting in the parking lots of, uh, of Western bars than he did uh, playing in them. Um, How many letters would you say that you had correspondence with him over the years? Um, I mean, you can see there's like, I don't know, 25, 30, and then he sends little things. Um, but I, I, I wasn't very organized with them. I've lost a few, and um, I, they're not numbered or anything, so I, tr I don't know what order they go in anymore. So it's kind of like just haphazard here. But Can we just look through sure, some absolutely. of them randomly? Absolutely. There's one other point I wanted to make that Vicki uh, was talking about that she found interesting, and that's when he, um, he refers to Hank Williams. That was his idol. And he talks about Guns N' Roses and, and doing his song or whatever, and, and he said, well, Hank Williams was my hero, and... Um, and he believes he was killed for his money, and then he he gave he sent a picture. This is the one the rats got a hold of. Um, That's what's interesting. I remember you you, you yeah. said that he said that, and then Vicky said that June Carter, Cash had kind of told her the same thing that there was there was a, a big belief that Hank had actually been killed. Oh really? Well, here it is, and and this is what he sent me a picture of Wells Fargo Bank with the Hank Williams statue, and he says. Um, now, he, my mother named me Lawrence Alexander, so when I wrote to him, I wrote both my names. Okay. And, and so he refers to me as some letters, Matthew, and some letters, Lawrence. Um, so here is Lawrence, Ragtime, Anson, whatever. Um, okay, so, so something behind, cow, behind laws watching you, um, watch yourself. Hank Williams was murdered for music. You don't realize if you get there, there's millions of big money comes into play. Go to the bank and they will give 5,000 to try to try to draw out 5 million. They will pay 50 grand to put you in a nut ward and another 50 to make sure you never get out. So you don't, you don't realize people that, have, that get it are not gonna give it up. He's talking about money. And um, if you think you can do it good, you can make it. Ha ha, I just did 33 years for being the best I could, um, the best, and covered up uh, my stuff destroyed. Can your bandstand stand? Don't think the police are gonna uh, protect you. They protect money and payday. When when um, when I played country western, I spent more time in the back parking lot kicking ass than on the bandstand. The big one was, oh, I love your, I love you and your music, but my husband don't like you. Or some drunk cat calling, yelling, look at the the little girl with the long hair. After I. After I kicked all the ass, someone else pays the cops um, to haul me off and cut my hair off and go to jail. They take my songs and get up with them. Um, I at one time loved people and wanted to please them. Um, they, something, they're like robots banging their heads for pay. Don't play music for no one. Um, for no one ever who you think they are, that's not who they are. Only, that's only what you think, and that's what you were told. 
Um, don't look for the applause, I think it says, and it's, it gets, the pandering gets crazy. Do you think he was telling you that because he knows you're a musician? Oh yeah, yeah, I sent him music and um, picture and, and that's exactly why he's saying it. And there's his signature right there. Matthew was saying he always puts the, uh, the obvious sign that's on his forehead right there. So this is paper that he got from, you know, I guess this is like evidence that the, the, you know, this is like a shank or something. They got a little measuring stick here. This is paper, obviously, probably was thrown in the trash or something that he dug out. I didn't know paper was such a, you know, commodity that there was such a shortage of it. Um, a lot I don't know about prison. I don't care to, to be honest with you. Um, so here he's like, um, you know, um, Send some paper um, in an envelope. Must be hard times. You you save your stamps, their money. Um, He's complaining so, you're not sending him right, right paper and, and stamps. Um, something about where I lived when I was a kid, and and my mom and brother was in the prison. Oh, I guess he learned how to do it then in Huntsville State Penitentiary. Uh, maybe have a good day. Be careful of lies. A lot of people tell you, and they think it's a movie TV show. Um, you, if, if you were for real, oh, here it is. If you were for real, boy, you would send um, your, your old dad, your, I think it's a dear old dad, but you send your old dad some money, 20 grand would be nice, and he's got a big smiley face there. It's, you know. 20 grand would be nice. <laughs> it sure would be. Matthew, that was really awesome. You have so many letters, we could look through them all day. We'll, we'll get together and we'll do that again another time. Because you showed us the main ones that you, you were referencing in the, the last interview. So you wanted to play a song. Let's do that song. All right, sounds good. So this is Bruce. Bruce is in uh, Matthew's band. And Bruce has an interesting tie-in that we will talk about another time. It's a tie-in to this whole Manson story and everything. And it involves you being shot. So we'll talk about that another time, a little teaser. But what did you guys want to do today? Well, we're, we're just going to do a uh, song here that's a very loose interpretation of Look at Your Game Girl. And um, we take quite a bit of artistic liberty, I would say. And um, we're just going to wing it here. We, you know, we, um, we just kind of, um, you know, been jamming a little bit here and there. And um, we don't, we've never played it live, played it publicly or anything. So this is a, a, an original first. Or,
Look at your game, look at your game, look at your game, girl. Look at your game, look at your game, look at your game, girl. Look at your game, look at your game. And if anyone would like to get Matthew's book, I will have his email address here at the end of the video again. You can email him and get the book directly from him. <laughs>